the truth is that NATO has to come to terms and the United States has to come to terms with the implications of what this aggression means by Russia directed against Ukraine. The any negotiations will be determined by the outcome on the ground. The outcome on the ground is determined by the resistance of the Ukrainians. The Russians have proven themselves a relatively inept force. And I would remind our, all of our European listeners that escalation by Mr. Putin is not solely under the control of NATO. No matter what NATO does or doesn't do, Mr. Putin may decide to escalate. So it's imperative that we sustain the Ukrainian forces in the fight. The Russian forces are defeatable on the battlefield, and even if they aren't, as Secretary Blinken has said, Russia can face a strategic defeat over the midterm from this. Air support can be provided by nations who are willing to go in. These airspace, this airspace does not belong to Russia. I want to remind your listeners that this is Ukrainian airspace, and it's the president of Ukraine appealing for international support. I'm not going to get into the dispute about whether U.S. aircraft shoot down Russian planes, wave at Russian planes, or avoid Russian planes. This is for the president of the United States and the official leaders to decide upon and determine how to proceed. What I will say is that the future of the West determines, is determined in large part by what happens in this conflict in Ukraine. It is in the interest of every country in the West to support Ukraine on the ground. Well, let me ask you this question. If after Putin has digested Ukraine, he decides that he wants to finish his political objective by rolling NATO back out of the other countries of Eastern Europe who are now hosting NATO troops, do we at that point say, oh my goodness, since you might have nuclear weapons against us, we'll surrender? What do we do then? How likely do you think you that would to, be, that he would invade public, no. NATO allied countries? You and, our you and our national leaders have to realize this. Putin's objectives are not limited to Ukraine. This is about rolling back the westernization, the rule of law, the international order in Europe and the rest of the world. This is simply the first battle. It is the easiest of the battles to fight if our nations are unified and can face reality in this. If we fall back and are intimidated by Mr. Putin's threat of nuclear weapons, if there's nothing we can do to help Ukraine, then um, we'll be dealing with the next crisis on NATO's territory itself. Mm -hmm. From as long as I've dealt with the Russians in the post-Cold War period, they've always believed that the Baltic states belong to them. And so does they that then think, think that... Moldova do you theirs. think that they Russia think is currently is winning on the ground in Ukraine? Russia's not winning on the ground. It's right now... Uh, checkmated on the ground, or at least checked on the ground by poor logistics, communications, and the stiff resistance of the Ukrainians. Do it's you not expect winning that to change? Yet, but it could change. The Russians uh, have no regard for civilian casualties. They do have a lot of heavy firepower, and uh, they do have an air force that could be more uh, deeply engaged. Uh, today, they're bombing civilian targets in Mariupol. Um, I'm convinced Mr. Putin's got an eye on the International Criminal Court. He's trying to steal Ukraine as quietly and quickly as he can using the threat of nuclear weapons, but he will use massive firepower if necessary. Czechoslovakia's fate is sealed when Hitler meets British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. The agreement signed last night is symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. I believe it is peace for our time.